I want each of you to think about what you can do. Can you give a few hours a month to volunteer? If you're in Raleigh, we have folks coming in our office all the time to help out. If you're in Greensboro, we have a Greensboro office here uh, run by Rebecca Mann, our community organizer. Um, come in and help out. Maybe you can give a few hours a month to make phone calls to voters. We're going to be getting a system that enables you to actually um, call targeted voters in key districts and patch them through to their legislators to support our positions on these issues from your home. Anywhere where you've got a phone and an internet connection, you're going to be able to uh, you know, give an hour, give two hours, give a couple hours a week uh, to help make a difference on these bills. Um, we're going to ask you, can you commit now to coming to our day of action um, when people from across the state come together in Raleigh to meet face to face with our legislators? Tentatively, that's set for February 15th, Tuesday, February 15th. Can you put that on your calendars? Can you commit now to taking a day off of work to be there and make a difference for the community? Can you commit maybe to scheduling a meeting with your legislator, even before the legislative session starts back up in January? Can you commit to sitting down and talking to them, learning what their positions are, answering their questions, and building a relationship? Because we are going to need those relationships in this coming year. So it's going to take all of us working together, all of us engaging, all of us giving our time, all of us giving our money in ways that we have not before to make this possible. Um, and I can tell you that win or lose on any one of these issues, our community and Equality North Carolina is going to emerge from this coming year stronger, with more supporters, and more powerful than ever before. Um, we are going to fight these amendments. We're going to fight these negative bills, and we can't stop them. We, we can't guarantee it. The odds are against us, but if we work hard, there is a real opportunity for us to stop them, and there is an opportunity for us to emerge ready to take on whatever new challenges and whatever opportunities are available when that pendulum does swing back. Because we know it will swing back, and we know that our political action committee is going to be working really hard to help move that along as quickly as possible. So I'm asking every one of you to take a minute right now to fill out that sheet. Tell us what you can do in January, starting in January. What can you personally do to help us win the fight for equality here in North Carolina? Um, and with that, I'm going to uh, stop and take questions for a little bit here. Um, thank you all so much for being here and, and for, for participating and for the commitments you're making right now. Uh, does anyone have any questions at this point? Tom. How do you define are the Republicans or are they all over the place? Um, well, you know, it's going to be interesting to see. They're, uh, there is a leadership fight in the House, which may cause some divisions. And I'll tell you, too, um, it tends to be a lot easier to be a united caucus when you're in the minority and you're just saying no to everything than it is when you actually have to govern. Um, so I think we're going to see some fault lines in the Republican caucus on both sides um, that we haven't necessarily seen before. Um, I think we're going to see a division between some of the social conservatives who really want to focus on uh, abortion and gay rights and everything uh, along those lines versus uh, some more moderate folks who really want to focus on uh, the size of state government, uh, the economy, supporting business, and those kinds of issues. Um, and I think it's going to be really interesting to see exactly how those fractures form uh, in the coming months. Great question. Yes? What determines when the amendment could potentially go on the ballot, as in 2011 or 2012, is it when it comes out of the legislature, or can they time down it in the, in the actual ballot? Um, what we've seen in the past is Did you that... repeat the question? Oh, sure. I'll repeat the question. Uh, the first one, if you didn't gather, was um, how united is the Republican caucus that I just answered. Uh, and this question is, um, how is the timeline on the amendment determined um, for whether it would go on the ballot in 2011 or 2012? <laughs> Um, the bills that we've seen in the past have always put it on in the same year as they're moving the bill. Um, but I don't believe there's anything that would prevent them from passing a bill this year that uh, would actually put it on in 2012. Um, so it 
could move sooner but still be delayed on a 2012 ballot. Um, we're getting really conflicting signals about which approach they're going to take. Um, and we just have to be ready uh, to fight it whenever it does start moving in the legislature. Um, one of the things, uh, I, I think uh, there are some Republicans who want to move it quickly, uh, and, and some anti equality Democrats who would like to move it quickly um, and get it out there because they've been waiting seven years to try to do this. There are also uh, some folks in the Republican Party who would very much like to have this on the ballot in 2012 because they believe that it would um, turn out their base uh, in an election year. Um, so we don't know exactly which approach is going to be at this point. Yes? Yeah, for the politicians who are voting in favor of discriminating or discriminative policies, how much is just malice and hatefulness? How much is ignorance and how much is just a political game if you can even separate that? So the question was, um, for the folks who are opposing us, um, how much of that is, is real bigotry? How much of that is uh, a, a political calculation? Uh, you know, what's the motivating factor for these, these uh, anti-equality politicians? I think it varies a lot. Um, there are definitely some true believers who are absolutely deep in their hearts opposed to any sort of equal protections for LGBT people. There are some people who are just simply bigots. I mean, we, we saw Larry Brown and his Queers and Fruit Loops comment um, not that long ago. Um, but there are also a lot of people who are voting against us who I think um, are just a little uncomfortable and are not sure what to think about our issues. They're people who maybe don't really know an LGBT person in their lives, who don't really understand um, what that means or what LGBT people are actually like. And that's why these face-to-face -face interactions that we've been talking about with Day of Action and with um, uh, in-district meetings are so critical because we have to put a face on it for some of these people who, who could be on our side but just aren't quite sure um, and don't really know what they think about the issue. And then kind of on the, the third um, group, I think there are people who believe in LGBT equality, who want us to be treated fairly, and who are simply terrified politically um, of what's gonna happen to them in their next, year, next election if they support us. And that's why the work that Equality NC PAC does uh, to protect our pro-equality incumbents uh, and to uh, elect uh, pro-equality challengers is so important because we have to make sure that we're counterbalancing that fear with the fear that doing us wrong has consequences as well. Um, and we also have to get them to understand that in, in many of these cases, the fear is just simply not um, justified by the reality. Uh, the fact, you know, as we saw in this election, this was not what voters were worried about. This was the first election in North Carolina state history where the entire legislature was on record on LGBT rights because of the vote on the School Violence Prevention Act. And we just didn't see it get traction. It's not what the voters were concerned about. And we have to keep hammering that message home to try and get some of those people who want to do the right thing. It always breaks my heart. I have had legislators pull me aside and say, now Ian, you know I support you, right? Right, but I can't vote for this bill. We cannot let them continue to do that. Uh, and we have to, to be there in their district and give them the courage that they need to stand with us and do what they know is right. So it's a great question, thank you. Matt. You said it's gonna cost the state $5 million to put the amendment on the ballot. What do you anticipate it will cost advocacy groups? to either support it or oppose it? Um, and have you gotten, have you reached out to any national LGBT organizations to get their support already? Um, the question was, what what's it gonna cost to fight a constitutional amendment if it does go on the ballot? I mean, I don't think we have exact numbers on that. We've seen campaigns around the country um, that range uh, from very small and, and under-resourced campaigns around seventy or eighty thousand dollars, all the way up to you know into the millions. Um, it, it will take significant resources uh, to effectively fight this on the ballot. Um, we have been having conversations already uh, with national partners. We don't have anything 